This morning, we are digging into the details of Governor Lamont's plan to cancel medical debt in Connecticut. So joining us to break this down is Mike Waterbury of Collinsville-based Goodroot, which is a community of companies with the mission of reinventing health care. Mike, thank you so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. Good morning, Angelo. Good morning. So we talk about this issue of medical debt. This can be a really heavy burden on families across the country. Put this into perspective. What does this look like here in Connecticut across the country? Yeah, so medical debt is, you know, we look at it a little differently than regular debt. I mean, you don't necessarily choose your if you need help, right? So it's uh, sometimes we even call it medical oppression because it really isn't your choice. And it's the leading cause of bankruptcy, uh, affecting minorities significantly more than others. Um, one in four Americans, I think uh, Governor Lamont talked about 88 billion in medical debt in the United States, but some numbers are even closer to 200 billion. And so it's really showing the systematic failures of the system and the pressure and the burden that it puts on patients. And to address some of these failures, the governor now introducing this plan um, to cancel medical debt, break down the big takeaways of that plan. What do families need to know about this? Well, first of all, I applaud the governor's efforts in this regard. It's, it's very important to Americans and, and to Connecticut uh, residents. So, um, I mean, I think the biggest takeaway, Angelo, is that if you invest, the governor's talking about $20 million, you can eliminate $20 billion. So it goes to show this dis disconnect between what is, the, what is the true cost of this health care and why should, it, why should 20 million resolve 20 billion? Shouldn't the price just be transparent? and the system work more effectively. But ultimately, I also believe, and, and I'm hopeful that this comes of it, is that we really need to understand what's causing it and start to work to fix it. I mean, if you just eliminate it now, we'll probably have the same conversation three or four years from now, it might even be higher. So we need to take all the information and all the data and all the constituents, the hospitals, the insurance companies, and analyze what's driving this and start to put actions in place to fix it. And diving deeper into this plan by the governor, how is this actually going to work? How is he going to cancel this medical debt? So we mentioned a company called RIP Medical Debt, which is a nonprofit that's doing this work across the country. They've done it for some, for some cities like Toledo, Ohio. And so um, essentially what you do is you go to the provider community, mostly the hospitals, you get the data. Um, then you analyze the data. You look, at, you look for billing errors and issues with the data, and then you come back with sort of a proposed amount that resolves the debt. And then you notify the patients that, you know, have that debt that, that has been resolved. And so, um, again, the key, I think, is to take all that information and all that collaboration and, and start to really understand what's causing this. I mean, is it the fact that patients aren't using financial assistance plans that they can use? Is it the fact that the bills are inaccurate? Is it the fact that the insurance companies have issues with you know, participation in networks and other things like that. I mean, that, that really ultimately will be the key, but um, we do a, a lot of this work here at Goodroot as well. So we're happy to help and hopeful that we can get involved, but it's, it's a very exciting time. And again, I applaud what the governor's doing in this regard. And in the meantime, as we wait to see what happens with the governor's plan, what can consumers do to avoid medical debt? Well, a few things. I mean, first of all, you have to be, you have to get engaged and try to be educated. Uh, healthcare is complicated, but um, financial assistance plans, nonprofit hospitals, which most of them are, um, have financial assistance plans. So based on your income levels, you can qualify for either free care or highly discounted care. That's, we have a company called Breeze Health that helps people with that. Um, so education, financial assistance plans, try to you know, if, if, you're, if your employer has access to navigation services that help you understand your health care better, um, that's a great avenue. So it really starts with getting educated, understanding the care you need, making good decisions, and then applying for programs that are somewhat complicated, but programs that, you know, can help you afford the health care. There you go. Mike, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate all the great insight. Mike Waterbury of Goodroot, thank you so much.